Hey, what's up? It's raining today, so I, I kind of thought I'd do a little video on my, my KDX. Can't really do too much. Done working and driving and stuff today for the day, so. <clears throat> um, I, I, guess, I guess the thing I really want to do with the KDX is just to explain something pretty different on it. Um, in the, the 70s and 80s, and I think maybe in the 60s, you could get a couple dirt bikes with uh, oil injection. And that meant that your two-stroke oil was like you put it in a vat, like a separate tank, and uh, a pump would meter out by the RPM, by the speed of the engine, how much oil to put in. And at low speed, they put like hardly any oil at all in. And uh, high speed, they they dump more and you know try and get more oil in there as the temp would go up and stuff. But um, anyway, uh, th this kind of came together by accident a while ago for me. Like I discovered you could you could do something on these bikes. This is a KDX 200. KXs, KDXs, uh, they're getting old now. I mean, it's, it's sort of old. Everything's four-stroke now. Guys really don't follow like two-stroke stuff much. But uh, this this KDX uh, was pre-mix. You, you mix the gas and the oil. You put it in a big old green tank right there. And, uh, you know, you... You mix it up 32 to 1. That was like what all the bikes were, CRs, KXs, YZs, RMs. All of them were like 32 to 1. Well, I had found out a while back that uh, you, you could actually uh, get some oil into the crankcase um, through the same vacuum that the, the carb was on. And that may sound impossible to people. They may be like, you know, you're totally talking crap. That bike is premix. But I, I ride this bike to Sunoco about a mile away. And... Uh, I pull up at the pump and I, I put regular gas in it. And, you know, if if people knew that it needed premix, they'd be like, you know, what are you stupid? What are you doing? And I ride away and there's smoke coming out the tailpipe. And it's been like that for, you know, five, six, seven tankfuls. And, and I figured this stuff out a while ago. Um, real quick, go, I'll go into the theory of it and explain exactly what it is. This bike is, uh, it has a couple simple mods. It has, a, believe it or not, a chainsaw flywheel. That's a, that's a ZX14 flywheel cover. It's not, it's not a KX flywheel cover. It's got a chainsaw flywheel and a chainsaw uh, ignition coil. So it's always at full ignition advance on this bike. And right then, you know, some people will be like, you know, at this point, what you're talking about is completely impossible. But what that does is uh, once you have it running like that, you have to drop compression, and uh, I have an 18 millimeter spark plug. That's a big plug out of like the 50s and 60s. Once you drop compression a little bit, you can actually be at full ignition advance all the time, and the bike starts and runs great. It's a zero pound flywheel that's on there. In other words, it's an aluminum disc off of a chainsaw, and uh, the bike starts. It starts at high RPMs. You can't kick start it. You gotta you gotta walk with it. You gotta bump start it to get it going. But once it starts, um, what what you've done. By, by lowering the compression and running, running it always at full ignition advance, it, it blows out the charge at all RPMs with a, a lot of energy. In other words, the air that goes in gets hot and pushes itself out real hard through the exhaust port, and it leaves in its trough a vacuum, because what goes in is all you get at low temperature. Once it's at high temperature, it leaves, and there's no pressure behind it. And then you uncover the intake ports, and uh, the charge runs up. Um, when, when the charge runs up, depending on, on you know, what you're doing, when the charge runs up, the, uh, there's a period of time on crank rotation where there's, the crank is under vacuum. The piston, after it's on the ascent and it covers up the exhaust port, is uh, an intake port too, is, is building, you know, there's a vacuum under there. And then you go to the top and you fill the, the cylinder, or you get some to the cylinder, but you don't necessarily always fill it, especially at high RPMs. And, you know, you, you kind of can mark off on crank rotation the degrees of vacuum, uh, you know, vacuum um, during the period of time that there's vacuum in the crankcase, as opposed to when there's, there's a pulse. When you drop compression on any engine, uh, contrary to popular belief, you increase, you partially, from a manner of speaking, you increase its displacement. displacement. In other words, if you add CC area, if the, if the cylinder was under a complete vacuum, you actually draw in more air and fuel, theoretically. You know, it's very hard to do in practice, but if there's less area in a cylinder, you, uh, you, it takes more to fill that cylinder. In other words, if you make a vacuum in its wake, in the wake of the explosion, you can fill the cylinder. Uh, you know, it, it takes more. It takes more air to bring it up to the same, the same uh, you know, pressure or the same mass of air brought into it. So anyway, if you lower compression on a two-stroke, 
and you get the ignition to where the explosions are always violent, or as violent as you can get them, blasting out the, the exhaust, the expansion chamber right there, what you end up with is uh, you end up with more vacuum. And you end up with more degrees of vacuum on the crank. In other words, the crank is like like 190, or say you go from uh, 190 up to like 220 degrees of vacuum in the crank, and 220 is more than half of 360, considerably more. So what you end up with, uh, this bike here, may not believe it, this bike not only for two-stroke oil uses gear oil, SA140, SA90, and uh, I, I trim the, the transition from the, the crankcase or from the gearbox. It takes its gearbox oil and draws it up at a perfect premix into the crankcase because the crankcase is under more degrees of vacuum than it is under pressure. And when it is under pressure, it uh, it doesn't it doesn't have time to, to jet back the uh, the oil. And also some of the oil uh, you know diverts diverts to a different angle. So anyway, the bike. Um, the bike isn't oil injected, but the bike is, uh, yeah, the bike draws its two-stroke oil, not from the gas tank, but from the, the actual gearbox, a port between the gearbox and the crankcase, and it works. Um, the, the other thing is, uh, my battery's running low. Oh, no. The other thing is, uh, this camcorder's about to crap, is the temperature of the cylinder wall, trying to make that vacuum. In, uh, in 1910, a guy named Still, Figured he could he could uh, make steam with the temp with the you know high temperature coming off the exhaust pipe of a, of a two stroke, and that he would run the the steam under the piston. He he have a straight connecting rod that would just poke out of a seal, and he put the connecting rod later. And uh, sure enough, he did it. And he it like the, the horsepower was uh, was completely unreal. He had a three uh, eight inch pistons. He was 600 horsepower at only 400 rpm out of a two stroke, and uh, that's like 6,800 foot pounds of torque. Then he made a ship motor with one 22-inch piston and 36-inch stroke, and he made uh, 170,000 foot-pounds of torque at only 120 RPM, which was you know unheard of at the time. People were even steam turbines couldn't do anything against that. But then the guys who knew their stuff got on it and said like, even if he's making steam, he's only going to boost like 10 or 15% of the horsepower. For, from what so what he did was he made the perfect. He made the perfect uh, containment of the air for the two-stroke, and it would boost up in pressure. Yeah, it's called the air standard, like a 10 to 1 compression ratio that measures like 150 on a gauge. Like this bike here probably measures about 140 or maybe 135 right now. Um, when you measure that, if, if you weren't to let the heat out, it'll, air always gets hot when you compress it, that pressure would be like 430 pounds at a 10 to 1 compression ratio or 8 or 9.5 to 1 compression ratio. And that's called the air standard. And this guy in 1910 came close to the air standard, you know, or the standard of heat of compressing air with none of the heat getting out, and uh, the horsepower just blow your mind. So anyway, um, the heat is kept in on this engine with the lower compression, and I use uh, use oil, organic oils, freaking like corn oil and crap like that, you know, just to just to uh, keep the heat or, or get the heat sort of up. The radiators get warm, but the block gets really hot, but it runs good. It runs just like a four-stroke on power curve. It, uh, you crack it open, you're right over a tree. The, the front of the bike's vertical. Um, power wanes off. Six gear. You know, power wanes off a little bit. It's not, it's not killing itself like it used to. But the funny thing is, um, when I was trying to figure out the the transition, you know, getting the two the oil from the the gearbox into the crankcase. When I was figuring out what mixture to run, like like. Sometimes you don't know if you're going to set it up and it's only going to supplement. Like you'd only you'd run like 40 to one or 70 to one, and then you'd have supplement from the gearbox. But this one, um, it's dead on. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. But when I was trying to figure it out, because the massive volume of air it moves, and the high you know the extra oil in it, and the spark plug can't, it doesn't foul. It's like a 1950s 1960s uh, 18 millimeter. The whole woods. After I come out of the, the the woods, the whole woods was like was like three smoke grenades going off, or uh, or blue smoke. You know, how smoke is white or purple, military smoke. It was like blue smoke, as if as if like there was a blue grenade going off, or three blue grenades, and it'd be like that. Uh, some nights when I was trying to first figure it out, 